Yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. It's what what's happened in the last few years with a, a lot of a lot of guys like y'all and even myself. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm way down on the ladder, but you know, I do have people that's been buying my music and supporting me coming to shows when they can for the last 12 years that I've been doing this and it's a cool thing. And it just seems like it's really kind of picked up. Like you said, I don't know if it was with Sturgill or with, uh, I think Sturgill kind of was the first one. I don't know. He woke me up. I'll tell you what, dude, I've never, I was, I had, when I had gotten a gig playing at this, it was, I can't remember what it was called, but it was at the backstage Opry grill. It was, it's yeah. over. I think it used to be the Shoney's. But yeah. It was hooked to a, a hotel over there by Opryland, and although not affiliated with the actual Opryland. Right. But uh, my, my friend Kenny Beard, he hosted a songwriter thing there once a week and he invited me to come out. God rest his soul, by the way. He's a hell of a dude. Um, He invited me out there. Man, it was bullshit dude i hated it i was I, all i was doing it was tourists who didn't give a shit you know that I'd, I'd get a clap here and there and you know nobody knew my songs and it was just one of those things and it was a 100 bucks and a meal yeah which was pretty big money for something like that oh yeah so, but i got home that night and i was just you know just deflated i was like man this god you know yeah because it's 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 uh you know there's no uh there's no satisfaction in being ignored i guess is the <laughs> which you know by that point i should have been used to it but i got home and i plopped down on the couch and i turned the tv on and i guess i'd been watching family guy before i left because it was on tbs and like i turned it on and the first thing that happened the first thing that was on the screen was conan o'brien holding up this now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Sturgill Simpson. Oh, yeah. And then that guitar bang, bang, started off. And I just, I remember thinking like, great. Another one of these uh -huh. assholes trying to, trying to sound country. He's got him. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at this guy. Oh, he's wearing sneakers. Yeah. And then he started singing. And I just like went, what in the fuck is this? Yeah. And before that song was over, I had everything downloaded that he'd done up to that point. Mm. And, uh. <laughs> I just heard my daughter scream, Dad, come here. Yeah, I heard her. Uh, but, uh, man, that essentially, dude, and I, listening to that, that was a big thing where I realized, like, man, I could, I guess I could cut a record, you know. I just, hell, he did it, and I've never heard of him, and he's on Conan O'Brien. He's country as shit. And that was that was a big moment, man, realizing that, that Nashville ain't the only way. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think Shooter – Jennings told me one time that he introduced Sturgill to Dave Cobb. I wouldn't surprise me. They were at, yeah. I think they were at a Boxmasters, Billy Bob Thornton and the Boxmasters show or something. Huh. And Sturgill was just there kind of hanging out. I could be wrong on that. I'll have to ask him, but I, I'm I pretty sure he told me that. I wouldn't surprise me, man. Dave's, man, he's, you know, and he's, yeah. he's not one. He's, dude, that guy's probably like, you know one of the biggest producers in the oh by far uh, in the industry and he did it without the he's not cutting mainstream records you know and that's incredible i mean that's amazing it really is and i mean so versatile too i think he's working with barry gibb now i saw yeah. i mean i can't wait to hear that shit just because oh, even if it's like you know you know it's going to be something just because it's got dave's name attached to it and he's working on it i yeah. mean the Oak Ridge boys records are phenomenal that he's done. Yeah. I know. haven't I haven't heard them. Oh I've man. Heard. He he did one. I can't remember the name of the song, but it's like a gospel thing. And it sounds like they're around one microphone in a big open room. And it would, it, yeah. I, it's it, it puts you there when you hear it. Well he's I mean, notorious it's... for he's notorious for going in the, the old school like that, you know. It's oh like, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, take ditch the pedal board type thing, you know, like right. just put it, plug it in and play it. And which is cool, man. I mean, it's very, it's rootsy, but he's found a way to make it sound really fresh. And uh, every, I, yeah, I haven't heard of Dave Cobb. I haven't seen, heard something with Dave Cobb's name on it that I didn't like. And I will put uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. in there too. <laughs> <Wheeler Walker records. laughs> yeah. 
I mean, and that works so good what they did with that, you know. Oh, they man, knew it, that, they knew it would, and it did. I mean, it's dude, that, that was genius. Mm -hmm. That was genius. And and it for was. a moment, there there was that like this tiny little moment where people didn't realize that it was a joke. They thought that <laughs> yeah. he was actually real. <laughs> yeah. And he was a real guy named Wheeler Walker Jr. Yeah. As if such a thing could exist. <laughs> But man, and then he all those all those videos of him talking about you know all he wanted to do was fuck Adele. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great shit. It's hilarious. Oh my god! I and mean, Reba, and he wanted Reba too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was selling out. He was selling out like little beer, like Third and Lindsley, and you know all kinds mm -hmm. of places like that. Man, oh, all he was over selling the country, out. Dude. And then he put out a second record and said, fuck it, I ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah. And vanished from the public eye forever. Yeah, social media and everything just cut it off. Mm -hmm.